we're going to look at how to record a macro in Excel. So the idea of a macro is Excel is going to remember exactly what you did and if you want to play back that exact series of actions you can using the macro. Now what we're going to do is a very simple one to start with, one that copies column A to column D. So what I've done here is I've set up some data, I just typed this in by hand, that shows you like this piece of data is row 1, column 1, row 2, column 1, etc. And uh, same thing here for column 2. So once we do the copying, you can see exactly where things came from. Okay, now to start recording a macro, there's a couple ways. There's a button down here you can use, which is always visible. You don't have to be on the Developer tab. But we're going to use the one on the Developer tab that says Record Macro. Now, we're not going to use the relative references this first time. That lets you do something a little different, and we'll illustrate that. But let's start by just recording the macro here. Okay, so I'm going to name this macro copy um, A to D. You can give it a shortcut key. If you're making a macro, you're going to use constantly. That's a good idea. Just be careful not to use a shortcut that you would use for something else. Like you don't want to call it Control C, for example. We're going to store it in this workbook. You can also make a personal macro workbook where you have the macros you want to have available for use in all your different workbooks. So this one will be particular to this workbook. And the description is copy column a to column D. Okay, now we're ready to record. And I'm going to select column A. Uh, choose copy. Select column D. Choose paste. Normal paste. And stop recording. Okay. Now I have my macro, and if we look in this macros button. You can see it's here. It's also showing some other macros I made in a different workbook, which I forgot to close. Uh, so all your open workbook, all the macros in all your open workbooks will show up here. But this is the one we just made. Okay, so let's cancel and uh, let me erase column D, so I'll go to the home page, uh, erase, clear all. Okay, and now let's go back to macros, choose the one we just made, choose run, and you can see it ran. Now if I want to, I can have a button for this as well. Here we go, insert, form controls, and let's have a button. Okay. I'm going to name this button, so I just go to create a button, and it lets me associate it with a macro, so I'll do that. And now, I don't want it called button one, I want something a little more meaningful here. So, I'm going to call it, write on it, copy A to D. Okay, and now let's erase column D once again. Oops, need to be on the home tab here. Clear all. And now if I push the button, it did its thing. Okay, let's do one more macro. This time, so let's go to the developer tab. Going to say record a macro. And this time I'm going to call it um, copy three back, meaning I'm going to copy three columns back. I'll do the same options here. Um, copy three columns back into current column. Now you'll notice instead of saying A to D, I'm using a relative reference, three columns back. So what I want to do here is choose use relative references. Then I want to select column D, and one, two, three back is column A. I'll select this, C 
copy and then come over here and paste this one. Okay, and stop recording. All right, now let me go to the home page and I'll erase column D. And now um, back to developer and let's first run Well, let's run copy three back here. So run. And you can see I got the contents of column A, but here's the cool thing. Now if I choose column E and I do copy three back, you can see I copied column B. So I'm using a relative reference. It's copying relative the number back relative to the column I'm actually in. Where's copy A to D? Always copies column A to column D. That's what it does. So that's to illustrate relative versus absolute references. And of course I could make a button for that one too if I wanted to. Uh, there's a sample one already stored on the website for you to look at. Okay, one last thing. When I go to save this, I have to be very careful. I want to be sure to save it as a macro-enabled workbook. All right, and um, I'll just call it test example. And say, but remember to do macro enabled workbook. Okay, that's it.